okay guys good morning this is part two to this morning's video as far as are you going to choose isaac or ishmael <clears throat> i'm not going to do any recaps so excuse me if you missed um that's a notification so if you missed part one please feel free to check it out all i'm going to do is continue reading um we're on genesis 17 the covenant of circumcision and then we're going to read the three visitors um in genesis 18 verses 1 through 15. So the covenant of circumcision. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, or in the Hebrew, El Shaddai. <clears throat> Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. And remember, he already had established his covenant with him, but he's saying he's going to confirm it. And then we also see that Abram was 86 years old when, and back in um, part one when hagar bore him ishmael and now he's 99 so that goes to show you some, some some years and some time have passed right so i will confirm getting back into 17 2 reading on i will confirm my covenant between me and you and thank you lord and will greatly increase your numbers <clears throat> excuse me guys abram fell face down and god said to him as for me this is my covenant with you you will be the father of many nations no longer will you be called Abram, which means exalted father. Your name will be Abraham, means father of many. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you are now an alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant. See, we going back to, are you going to choose Isaac or are you going to choose Ishmael, right? As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. Now we know what the circumcision talks about in the New Testament. We've read multiple scriptures on it and we know what it meant for the Old Testament. And for each context, it means what it means. The scriptures are saying what they're saying for the times that they're saying. So I'm not um feeling led to get into that this morning either we have too many videos covering that i just want to keep reading and keep it in this context for today's video for this chapter that we're reading okay so you are to undergo circumcision let me go back up this is my covenant with you and your descendants after you the covenant you are to keep every male among you shall be circumcised you are to undergo circumcision and it will be the sign somebody say the sign of the covenant between me and you for the generations to come every male among you who was eight days old must be circumcised including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner those who are not your offspring whether born in your household or brought with your money they must be circumcised my covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people he has broken my covenant God also said to Abraham, as for you, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. Remember, we talked about this in the first video, right? I will the, part, the first video for part one today and also other videos. But I mean, as far as today in part one, I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. And we talked about that in part one too, right? Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son and you will call him Isaac, which means he laughs. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. And then remember what the angel told Hagar um, a couple chapters up as well, right? So, uh, well, like a chapter up. So he said, I have heard you. I've heard you. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. 
I will surely bless him and I will make him fruitful and he will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. And then also remember Isaac is the, the ruler of 12 as well. So that number 12 is very symbolic. We did do a video um, talking about the, the names of God and um, numbers, what they mean spiritually and biblically, biblical meaning of numbers. So we know 12 is very um, symbolic. You got 12 disciples. You got the 12 tribes of Israel. And then also Isaac, um, well, the Israel, yeah, Jacob, Isaac, when they were birthed through him, because Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob birthed the 12 sons, the 12 tribes. And then you also, you know, also um, Ishmael has his 12 rulers as well. So this, this number 12 is very um, symbolic. So, and I will make him into a great nation, but my covenant, I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, and we're going to close in a few minutes, guys, God went up from him. On that very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and all those born in his household or bought with money, every male in his household, and circumcised them as God told him. What is that? The fire? Um, sound like it. As God told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised and his son Ishmael was 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were both circumcised on that same day. And every male in Abraham's household, including those born in his household or brought from a foreigner, was circumcised with him. So there's a lot that I could say with this chapter. I won't really get into it. You guys can let me know in the comments what this chapter is saying to you. But the power of obeying God um, is speaking out to me. I'll just share a few points. Because like I said, we did a Genesis series last year. So we went a little bit more into this. And just how God hears your prayers, the power of obeying him, the power of communion with him, the power of obedience, um, the power of knowing that, you know, if you have God and he don't say it's too late, then it's not too late. You know, there's some other nuggets I'm getting, but let's read about these three visitors. Um, yeah, and I'm going to go back up. And his son Ishmael was 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were both circumcised on that, on that same day. And every male in Abraham's household, including those born in his household, are brought from a foreigner was circumcised with him. So let's read, that was Genesis 17. Let's read Genesis 18, verses 1 through 15, and we will close. The, the Talking about the three visitors. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre. And remember, we talked about Mamre before, right, with this entire situation. While he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to bow. I'm sorry, his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, or O Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under the tree. So he's giving them so much great hospitality here in um respect and favor you know he's blessing them pretty much let me look and watch like look let a little water be bought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant very well they answered do as you say so abraham hurried into the tent to sarah quick he said get three seals and that's like um 20 quarts of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk in the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, and another thing that I love about our morning Bible reading is that the Lord always confirmed his word. That's how you know that it's the word of the Lord because he's going to confirm it to you. It's going to back up scripture and it's going to identify and like connect with your spirit. And you're going to know it's the Lord. You're not going to have doubts or questions. Some people do doubt and question, but I'm saying you're not going to have that uneasiness like it's not God. Because a lot of times when you feel that uneasiness or your gut or that intuition or your spirit, at them red flags, you know deep down it's not him. But the thing about God is, getting back to um, our video from this morning before this too, the thing about God is he's going to confirm his word. 
because you see how he said he allowed Sarah to, to he allowed certain things to be for set like set over Sarah and then he allowed certain things to be said over Abraham but it, it was confirming it wasn't it didn't conflict so like for example who God have for you is not going to be somebody that's going to take you away from the will of God it's not going to be someone where you have to make a decision. Are you going to choose them or choose God? You already know what time it is with that. that That's not from God. It's not going to be where you have to lower your standards and you have to get away from God to, to connect with this person. You understand like that God is not going to send you a job opportunity where you're going to have to curse him to get more money or you're going to have to compromise you know, or your, your 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 Christian values or standards or your light going to lower. That's, that's not God. God is not going to send you that wealth and abundance from that avenue of that way. Now we're in another scenario where I can hurt and close and it's taking you away from him. God is not going to send you anything or anyone that's going to conflict you and him. That's going to conflict your Christianity. There are going to be times where you have to stand up and be bold and make a choice. Yeah, but I'm saying he's not going to send nothing that's going to deviate you alone from away from his path. It's not going to be where you have to choose God and Satan. If it's from God, it's going to be lined up according to his will. And if it's of the enemy, if it's of the devil, it's going to be lined up to his will. So you see what I'm saying? So I like that God confirmed his word on both sides. And his his word kept was kept being aligned. That's the thing about God's word. Like, are we listening to it? Are we? I gotta eat my stomach. It's growling. Sorry, guys. Um, are we listening to it? Are we taking heed? You know. And the last time I ate was yesterday afternoon. Yeah, so I need to eat again. So, um, let's hurry up and read, guys. So, look, where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said. I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Remember what the Lord just told him in, in chapter 17, right? Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years. And Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Remember, we talked about that in part one as well. So Sarah laughed to herself because remember, Abraham had laughed too. Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my master is old or my husband's old, will I now have this pleasure, you know, or could I basically like, could this really happen for me? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes. You did laugh. And we're going to close with that. Basically, the rest of the chapter talking about Abraham pleads for Sodom and Sodom and Gomorrah's destroyed in the next chapter. But preferably, you guys was blessed um, and have a great day.